If you thought Tali's crab dish was weird, then wait till you see this one right here. I mean, the dude managed to bring the Italian out of Joe. Did he actually start to speak Italian out of habit? Benvenuto alla cucina di Masterchef. Grazie, amico mio. Prego. So I'm talking about season 10, episode 1, when one contestant, who was unsure of his own skills, managed to impress the judges during the auditions. Most people eat to live, we live to eat. His name, Kenny. His game, making a hell of an entrance. Because this guy decided to bring a dash of fun to the kitchen. Yup, he managed to get the crowd dancing and chanting thanks to his energetic presence. Wow, talk about getting things started with a bang. My name is Kenny, I'm 46 years old, and I'm a carpenter. Viva! For Kenny, MasterChef was the ultimate opportunity to provide for his family and demonstrate his true cooking skills. I've always wanted to give people the great food that I give my family. This is my opportunity to do that. When the judges arrived to check in on his progress, Joe immediately recognized Kenny's Bostonian roots and affectionately referred to him as the Italian Stallion. A New York strip, brujol, latini, salt, and buca, stuffed with prosciutto and Can cheese. Can we start with the proper pronunciation? <laughs> However, all the fun and fanfare aside, during his presentation, Kenny forgot a crucial element. Kenny, you got the cup of cheese over here. Oh, the cheese, oh my Don't god. Forget the cheese. The cheese, Kenny, how could you? Kenny was blown away by the energy in the kitchen that he forgot about the cheese. However, despite this minor setback, with 20 seconds remaining on the clock, he managed to plate his dish just in time, and boy, he was brimming with confidence. Hopefully my signature dish is good enough. I've been looking to hang up my hammer for a spatula for a long time. And, well, he had every reason to be happy, because just take a look at this. New York strip, brujol latini, salt and buca, on a bed of vegetable risotto. If Joe wasn't already impressed, he was super curious to go deeper into Kenny's love for cooking. And Kenny was happy to oblige. I'm a guy that has a fork, a spoon, and a knife painted on the back of my boat that says Viva Pro Mangiare under it. I can tell you confidently that he won the judges' hearts with that statement alone. I mean, this dude was bursting with passion, and the dish he presented had a story to tell. It's called the Hey Ma, What's Up? Because when I go to my mother's house, I open the fridge and I go, Hey Ma, what's up with these chicken cutlets? Well, it looks like Kenny has his way with people. He had just managed to make the audience swoon for his energy, but would he be able to snag the apron? When the judges walked to the table, they were immediately in awe of the presentation. The Brazala not stewed in tomato sauce is basically a grilled stuffed steak. In fact, Joe was so moved by the visual appeal of the dish that he couldn't help but share his admiration for it. So this is an interpretation of what would be classic Italian. The next thing you know, he was digging into Kenny's dish and his facial expression said it all. Wow. And it wasn't just Aaron and Joe. Chef Ramsay also remarked about its perfect texture. I'm amazed you got that texture from a New York strip. Although the famous chef thought the risotto could have been a little bit better, Kenny's honesty swept him away. It does need homework on that risotto. I needed another two minutes. Kenny just wasn't the kind of guy to hide his flaws. He was here to cook with his heart on his sleeve. And this trait wasn't lost on any of the judges. I can taste the passion, uh, that's evident. For me, it's an absolute yes. Meanwhile, Joe warmly welcomed Kenny to the MasterChef competition, and he did it with Italian flair. Grazie, amico mio. Prego. Buona fortuna. Grazie. Thanks to his dedication, Kenny walked out to share the news with his family, donning the apron with a proud smile on his face. But here comes a moment from MasterChef Australia, which to me was the epitome of wholesomeness. So, I'm talking about Season 12, Episode 1 of the spin-off, where 24 past contestants were back in the kitchen for another attempt at claiming the title. As the contestants arrived, they were shocked to find a newcomer to the judges panel. Oh yeah, Chef Ramsay was in Australia looking for a taste of greatness. But little did he know that one contestant would end up making his visit one to remember. Reynolds, all eyes are on you, my friend. Bring it up. I'm talking about white noise, a dish with a ton of intricate elements. Jasmine gelato, coconut, frozen ganache, uh, white chocolate crumble. Like, I'm speechless, you guys, and I've watched this clip over and over again. Strawberry gum jelly, yogurt gel, and little white pebbles with a strawberry consomme gel. As Reynolds described his dish, Chef Ramsay couldn't help but shake his head in disbelief. How could anything look so perfect? It's almost like being in a science lab. It looks breathtaking. The famous chef couldn't stop singing his praises for the dish as he went deeper and deeper into dissecting every single inch of it. It makes you want to dive into the bowl. It's very rare we see a dessert looking so beautiful. It's safe to say that Reynolds' white noise had left Chef Ramsay hungry for more. So beautiful, so early on in this competition. Honestly, the judges were thrown into a dilemma. 
Where the hell were they even supposed to start? There were so many elements to the dish that the judges were having trouble deciding. But Reynold decided to make things easy for them. Go for the little white pebbles. Okay. And as he cracked it open, the judges were taken aback. Absolutely gorgeous. Wow. Now, who saw that coming? A burst of red right in the midst of this immaculate white dish? Each of the judges took turns to taste the dish one after the other, but none of them were willing to share their feedback as of yet. With every second that passed, Reynolds' heart was racing. Would the judges like the taste, the texture, the overall feel? In fact, it tastes actually better, which is very hard for dessert when so pleasing to the eye. Jock went all in and quickly described what worked for him best, and it was only compliments all the way. Your technique throughout all the components is perfection. Well done, mate. But wait till you hear what Melissa had to say. This is the kind of ephemeral art that we expect from the best pastry chefs in the world. Meanwhile, Andy came in with his own feedback, praising Reynold for his impeccable finesse and execution. Hugely in contention to get a pin today. The only pin, so well done, mate. All eyes were pinned on Reynold as he headed back to his station, but there was one contestant who felt threatened by Reynold's flawless performance. While generally everyone was applauding Reynolds' feats, Jess felt devastated. As she looked at her own dish, she was washed over by a wave of insecurity. Like, what an act to follow, right? So honestly, who could blame her? My dessert hasn't got that theater of the pink petal that I wanted. And yeah, she was unfortunate enough to be called up right after Reynolds, who completely stole the show. Still, Jess bravely stepped up to face the judges. But Jock was quick to notice that something was amiss. Come here. <laughs> it's alright. Hey. hey, it's fine. Ah, uh, don't we all miss this guy? Jock, you are a gem of a person, and Master Chef will never be the same without you. Rest in peace, man. You see, the fact that Jock noticed her crying even before walking up to the front says a lot about the kind of person that he was. He always looked out for his contestants like his own family, and he proved time and time again that he'd always be there for them. It was truly heartwarming to watch Josh embrace Jeff and comfort her. Exactly the thing she needed before presenting her dish, right? Thanks to his encouragement, in a staunch competition for Reynolds' white noise, Jess presented her pink petal. And what's missing? The tempered chocolate was supposed to look like a flower. Is that the bit you're upset about? Yeah. Jess's dish wasn't complete, at least not to her expectations. But Chef Ramsay always speaks his mind. Always. The petals. Okay. <laughs> that is delicious. Damn, what a turn of events. Chef Ramsay's comments immediately lit up Jess's face, and boy did she deserve it. I didn't travel 12,000 miles for a petal, let me tell you. <laughs> and no, he didn't stop there. Nothing to cry over except tears of joy. I love it. Meanwhile, Jock and Melissa also shared their feedback, and Jess couldn't believe her ears. You set out to achieve nine elements on the plate, and they're on the plate. You nailed it. I mean, what more could you ask for? But what happened next was truly heartwarming. 21. God bless her. Yup, that's the spirit of Master Chef for you. Now, keeping up with the same spirit, let's head over to this next episode from episode 20 of season 10, when the top 8 contestants were faced with a unique and daunting challenge. Alright, so make sure you stick around because this challenge is about to take an unexpected turn. And when I say unexpected, I mean it. So, at the start of the episode, the judges went around asking each of the contestants the driving force behind their passion for cooking. And one contestant's reply managed to tug at their heartstrings. I have to do it for me. Opportunities don't come often like this. As tears welled in her eyes, you could see that Dorian meant every single word that she said. But let's not forget that this was the elimination round and the stakes were as high as ever, no matter how many tears everyone was crying. Daphne Oz stepped up to the front to present the mystery box challenge, and it was nothing like you've ever seen before. Lift! Hey. <laughs> The challenge was to create a mind-blowing dish, but it had to be a one-pan wonder. And it had to be in an hour. While Brie decided to make a pan-seared salmon, Mika took a huge risk by making a cracked pepper-crusted filet mignon in the cast-iron pan. But as the clock ticked down, Aaron and Joe were quick to point out that Mika was going to be cutting it real close. When they asked me what I wouldn't do, sear a filet in a cast-iron pan. You're taking a big risk here, Mika, you know that. And, oh, I forgot to mention the best part. The top dish would be featured on the Family Circle website. 
Meanwhile, when Aaron and Joe paid a visit to Supa Station, he was busy preparing a classic Indian shrimp dish. Well, you will see me very calm today. Today is your day, Supa. Yes. Good luck. And Noah was working on a Chinese frittata, a dish that Daphne seemed to really enjoy. But Chef Ramsay, however, had more than a few concerns. Yes. It seems a little bit simple, especially on a night like tonight. This is going to be elevated in a way you've never had a frittata. Moving on to Sherry, she decided to make an Indian chickpea curry, wanting to reconnect with her Indian roots. However, not everything was perfect. My biggest worry is just timing. When you're cooking everything in one dish, timing is crucial. Over on the other side of the kitchen, Sarah opted to make fondant sweet potatoes with steak. But guess what? Not a single home cook was even halfway done with their dish, and this got the judges really nervous. It's tricky to be able to do all this one hour, one pan. Are you kidding me? It's like really hard. However, Ramsey came back with a quick reply. Come on, I could do this in half the time. If you can do it, then do it. Don't say that to me, because I'm going to go and do it. I mean, of course. Who are we trying to judge here, right? If the man says so, he'd do so. But Joe was about to throw a hell of a curveball. Gordon thinks he can do a one-pot wonder <laughs> in 30 minutes. Yup, you heard that right. Chef Ramsay's time had officially begun, leaving him with only 30 minutes to do what everyone else was struggling to do in 60. Where's he cooking, behind us? Oh my god. While Joe wanted to see if Chef Ramsay would succeed, Aaron was soaking in every detail of watching the chef busy at work. Curious to see what he was cooking up? Check this out. Lemon, pepper, chicken pot pie. So it'll be a nice short crust on top. To their delight, Ramsay revealed that he was making a mouth-watering chicken pot pie. The famous chef, though, was running short on time. How is he going to get it reduced and caramelized? If he can really get that developed flavor, I'd be really impressed. As the final 60 seconds approached, the tension in the kitchen was palpable. The contestants were busy plating their dishes with a sense of urgency, while Chef Ramsay waited until the very last second before placing his delectable pot pie on the stove. Two, one, hands up! Kitchen up! Hands in the air! And then it was finally time for the tasting, and Chef Ramsay walked up to the front with his dish. Delicious lemon scented chicken pot pie. 30 minutes? Like, he's such a show off. He put leaves on his pie. Of course, the judges couldn't believe their eyes. It was simply unreal. Joe couldn't hide his amazement. Ramsay had pulled off a fantastic dish in record time. I'm actually a little bit surprised at how you were able to do that. It feels like really it's been cooking for three hours. Right, Good okay. job. Well, of course, there's a reason why the man is at the top of the culinary scene, huh? Challenging the famous chef only to have him completely destroy it is something Joe's not going to forget anytime soon. I mean, who'd ever dreamt to see Chef Ramsay as a contestant, right? Anyway, it's now time to turn up the heat, and who better to do it than Gordon Ramsay himself? Just touch it! Heartful. It's Heartful. freezing! It's the second time! Okay, take it from me, you guys. You're in for a treat with this one. In Season 12, Episode 17, the remaining six chefs stepped into the world of Wolfgang Puck's prestigious restaurant, Spago. We're out of the Master Chef kitchen, so we have to be doing something somewhere that's really upscale. Chef Puck set the bar really high.